Hello and welcome to an Empower Service tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how our control panel works. So when you first buy a server from us, you will receive an email. In this email will be details on how to log into the control panel. Now, once you're logged into the control panel, it can be quite daunting if you don't know what's going on. So in this video, I'm going to show you what everything does. So the first page you should be on is the My Servers page. If you don't see any servers on this page like I have, I have four servers here, but you'll probably just have one. And in the unlikely event you see nothing on this page, you're going to need to contact our support. So of course live chat is in the bottom right corner of your screen at all times and then you've got the account settings area here you can change your password update your email address change your name or change the place of the nav bar anything you want to do as you can see if I change it to the top the nav bar moves to the top and finally security controls that lets you enable 2FA and allows you to create APIs don't worry about APIs they're quite an advanced feature so back to the my servers page to access the server console and control panel you need to click on the name of the server so here minecraft java tutorial you'll be greeted with this console the first thing you want to do is start up your server. Now, obviously not all of you will be using Minecraft servers, but if you are, it's going to ask you what version of Java you want to use. Usually you just use the uh, latest version of Java, which is the automatically detected version. And there you go, the server's starting up. So at the bottom, these buttons here, the restart button restarts the server, the stop button stops the server, and the kill button will stop the server, but it will force it to crash. So if the stop button isn't working, press the kill button. However, this means you'll lose any progress that hasn't already been saved. So for example, if my server was midway through saving my world and I killed it, the world probably would be rolled back to the last time it was saved. I'll show you it here. Kill, instant crash. Nothing saves, it just crashes the server. These are your CPU and memory monitors. You don't have to worry about these at all. Next, we'll move to the server details. In here, you've got the name of your server. So this is the name that you'll see on the panel. You can change it as well at the top. You've got how much memory you've got. You've got your disk space. And then on the right, you've got the server info. This will just show you some very basic info about the server. But basically, all you're going to need is the IP. And if you're contacting support, sometimes they'll need your UUID. You can also see your resource monitors here as well. So if I were connecting to this on Minecraft, this would be the IP I connected with. Next, moving on to the SFTP details. This is for editing your server files within an SFTP client. We have a guide on this on our knowledge base. And the link for that is help.empowerservers.com. And as you can see, if I search SFTP, here is that guide. The audit logs show any changes that have happened to your server. So as you can see here, Lionel has installed RLCraft to the server. So if you had sub users, you could keep an eye on what they were doing. Next, we'll move to the management tab. In here, you've got some pretty important things. You've got the file manager. The first thing you've got is the file manager. This will show you all your server files. You'll probably spend a lot of your time in here. For example, editing config files such as the server.properties. Now head to databases. Each server comes with a set amount of databases if you need it. So in this case, I have two. And for example, in the case of Minecraft, if a plugin needed to use a database, I could create one here. Backups are also very useful. Most servers come with at least one. And this just saves your server in the current state. And then once the backup is saved, you can roll back to that backup. This will be important if you're making significant changes to the server and you're unsure whether you can revert those changes, you might want to make a backup first. Here we have the sub users and this is how you'd add other people to your server. So this will allow them to have access to your server console. So you might want to add your friends on this or any admins you have on your server. You can give them specific permissions. You can also just give them all permissions by clicking on these boxes on the right. And all you need to do to add a sub user is type their email in here. Once a sub user is added, they'll be sent an email and their panel account will be created. It's really that simple. The next area is allocations. If you need a port for a plugin, for example, for example, Dynmap needs an extra port, you would come here to see what your extra port is. I have one allocated to me, it's 7001. Now in the configuration section, we've got the startup parameters. For Minecraft, all you'll really be changing is the server.jar file. However, you shouldn't really need to touch anything in here. Here, I'm on a Rust server, and as you can see, there's a lot more things you can change. There should be little descriptions of what each thing does, if you're unsure, so it should be quite easy to use. And once again, if you are completely unsure of what something does, don't hesitate to contact us on live chat. Now we're gonna go over schedules. Schedules can be quite difficult, but I'm just going to give you a brief overview. Click create in the corner, name your schedule. Then I'm going to make one run every 30 minutes. So every star and then 30 minutes. If I wanted to make one run every hour, 
I'd put a zero in the minutes box, a star, and then a dash one in the hours box. If you wanna run it at a very specific time, such as 5 a.m., you'd make the hour five and the minutes uh, zero. If I wanted to run it at half five, you'd make it half five. If you wanna search up how to validly express this, just use cron expression or just contact our live chat and they should be able to help you. I'm just gonna have this one run every 30 minutes as that's very simple to set up. Click submit and now we can add commands. So press create task and you can send a power action. For example, we've got a few here. Start the server, restart the server, stop the server. So if you wanted to so if you wanted to restart the server every 12 hours, you could create that task. Here you can send a command and this is just directly into the console. So for example, I wanted to restart the server, I could say restarting server. So there you go. That's how to very simply set up a schedule. And of course, if you want to test the schedule, just press the trigger button. Next, you've got the advanced section. Now this section is actually quite useful. The install different edition section here is very useful. For example, if I wanted to install uh, Forge instead of Paper, this would allow you to install mods on your server. I can do it from here. All I have to do is just select a version, 1.18.2 recommended, and then just press this button here. Let's say I wanted to go to 1.12.2. So I click Paper because that's the most optimized version of Minecraft. Then I go to the version, find 1.12.2, and there it is. And I just press Install Different Edition. And finally, you've got the Tools section. So here I'm in the subdomain manager. So if you press create, so you can give a name on the subdomain. I'm going to type in Harvey for now. And then you can click a domain name. We only have one domain currently available, but we'll probably get more in the future. So I'm going to click Minecraft GA.me. And then the allocation is, of course, the default server IP. And then press submit. So now I could connect to my Minecraft server using the IP Harvey.MinecraftGA.me. Now we've got the mod pack manager. In here, you can install loads of mod packs. So for example, I want to install all the mod six. I click install. I choose the version, so the latest version, and then I can just install the mod pack. We've also got plugin manager. This does exactly the same thing. If it says not available, that means you're gonna have to download it yourself. And of course, we have a tutorial on that over at help.empowerservers.com. And here it is. It's one of my videos. And finally, you've got the mod manager. The mod manager lets you install very specific mods. The mod manager lets you install specific mods and all you've got to do is press install. However, most of you will probably be using the mod pack manager. So that's it. That's what every button on the panel does. And now you should be a pro at using our panel. Thank you very much for watching. If you require any more support, the fastest way to reach us will be via live chat located in the bottom right corner of your screen at all times. Thank you for choosing Empower Servers.